irrational man. How would you resolve this? How do you stop? How do you stop militant blacks from reacting to this? Let's clear the air here. What would you do? That's what I'm saying. As a black man, I want white people to know out there. Not all blacks are for Al Sharpton. No. Of course not. We know that. We know he's an anomaly. He's a freak. All black people use the N word. Most black people do not use the N word. They, they think there's mostly these kids and some of them from the ghetto. But trust me, in the black community, most people do not use the N word. Okay, and most black people. Believe me, I know that as well. I understand what the popular culture has done to debase, frankly, the African American community. It's mostly the bad always gets most of the publicity. You know, that's that's just talk. No. Right. It's like the degenerate sluts from Hollywood. We have to look at them and then think that they represent every woman in America. And then everyone sees that, and they think, well, that represents all black people. No, most black people don't use the N-word. Most black people want good things, and they, most people don't hate white people. We want to get along. Tell me about it. I know, that it. I know that as well, which is why I'm most, effect, uh, most affected by this. From the first time I went into a black church in Harlem when I was young, I was 18 years old. I, I talked about Brother Billy on my show where he was a preacher, a white preacher in the streets of New York, their 42nd Street. He wrapped my, my brain around his, his thumb. I gave him a hitch in my old Volkswagen and he took me up to his church. It was a black church, by the way, where he preached. They let him preach. And when I walked in and heard the gospel singing, I, I was affected by it in a way to this day I remember. And I've been in other churches where I've heard the gospel singing. I know these are the bedrock of America. And my analogy of the black church being part of the granite of America is very apt, don't you think, Kenny? Yes, it definitely is. You're absolutely right about that. I was brought up in the church. I'm not as active in it. But it is the foundation for a lot of people, black, white, or whatever, for Americans in general. God and Christianity is part of the stature of this whole country. And look who he chose to attack, the best and the kindest and the nicest people in the African-American community. This is the part that, that's eating me up here. Is there something so wrong with this picture? Who told him to go in there? What is the family here? What has his family got to do with it? How deeply ingrained are they with this uh, situation? I don't believe this came out of one man, do you? No, I'd like to know where, where he got this from. Was this from his parents? Because a lot of times, I, I don't know. I'd like to find out from the family. Was this stuff that's being preached? In? Yeah, I think the father needs to make a statement as soon as possible without a lawyer. Yeah, yeah, I I'd be to hear about this. But that, well, Kenny, my, look, we're all upset by this, and it's not going to go away overnight. And I think that there are some uh, militant people out there on both sides of both races who are plotting their next move. And that's the danger here. And I sincerely believe that Loretta Lynch, our attorney general, needs to come out and forcefully state that anyone who crosses state lines to incite a riot will be arrested by the federal government immediately. There is an anti-riot statute in the federal uh, law. She needs to say that. I don't know why they haven't said it. Kenny, are you a father? Uh, no, I'm not. But my final statement to you, Doctor, is I, I, Well, if you know a father, I'm going to give you a, a gift for Father's Day, which is Sunday. Countdown to Mecca. Make your final statement, please. I also want to say that all black people do care about whether it's black. If a black person hears somebody white, we cry about it, too. Don't let them fool you and think we all... Tell me, I know, I know that. I guarantee you, if I fell down in the street and there were black people coming out of a church, they'd pick me up faster than would the atheists marching by on the way to their next parade. Thanks. Kenny, thank you very much. I'll be right back. It's the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Racing legend. I remember this song as a kid. God it derived, by the way, from the African-American spirituals. Well, play it already. Play it loud in the middle of it. You have to teach everybody Show everything. Me that river. All right, turn it off. It's not going to work. You got to get to the point where he's really singing loud about that lucky old son gain nothing to do but <clears throat> turn around heaven all day. That's how I feel today. And that was based upon a slave song where people who were working day and night and they looked up at the sky from the, to relieve themselves of the pain and they, they started singing about the sun. Got nothing to do but move around heaven all day. And they imagine what it'd be like to be free. That's what that song means. And, you know, a day like today is so difficult for all of us. I know if you've been listening to the show for over an hour now, it's because you have agony over this, the pain. There's no joke. I'm not Obama where I can give a false crocodile tear one minute and jump on Air Force One and be in Hollywood taking the accolades to, you know, six hours later. I can't do that. I'm sorry. You know, the man of a thousand faces, I'm not. 
It's, it's, it's heartbreaking, and this is not going to go away so fast. And we're talking about who do you blame, by the way. You know, who do you blame? Drugs, the doctors, Katzenberg, Hatzenberg, Matzenberg, Ratzenberg, Weinstein for the pollution and filth they put out, the violence in Hollywood. Who do you blame? Right-wingers, left-wingers? You, you take your choice. Someone's going to blame some, everyone. Everyone's pointing fingers right now. And that goes back to the helter-skelter scenario of Charles Manson. And this kid wanted to start a civil war. Let's pray to God that Attorney General Lynch takes my advice. And I hope she's getting this information from someone. They know that I'm pretty sharp, and they know I'm pretty smart, and they know that I'm not what they say I am. They know who I am. Believe me, I'm on their radar, and I've been on their radar a long time. They can learn from me. She needs to step up to the plate right now and say that she's going to invoke the Anti-Riot Act of the 1964 era, I believe. And she will arrest anyone, any out-of-state agitator who comes into South Carolina to spread hatred and start a riot. She'll arrest them on the spot. Federal marshals will arrest them. Now, that would be an attorney general we could cheer. She'd be more popular right now than the president himself, who was nowhere to be found, incidentally. I don't know where he is. Maybe he's shopping in Rome with the family. I don't know where he is. Where's the leadership today? Where are the Republicans? Have they said a word on this? Not one word. Nothing. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. We're, we are all reeling from this disaster, this murder, uh, the series of murders in South Carolina. We're asking who's to blame. And we're looking for leadership. We have no leadership. We have nowhere to turn. Not one Republican has stepped up. And I suggested just now on this show that the first thing that needs to be done is that the president, instead of blaming guns, should have said anyone who crosses state lines will be arrested under the Anti-Riot Act. You're not going into South Carolina to stir up a riot. That's what should have been done, but I haven't heard it. Well, we have a leader on the line right now, someone that I would vote for in a heartbeat, someone I would support right from the get-go, and that's Donald Trump. Donald Trump, welcome to the Savage Nation. On this sad day, I'm glad you're with us. Hello, Michael. It is a sad day, is it not? Nine beautiful people executed in a church? Terrible. By a maniac. By a, a young man that is just an absolute sick, demented person. It's, it's a very sad thing, Michael. It's a very sad thing. Donald, look, let's talk about the election. That's what this is all about. Let's move on to that. And, and you know me. I'm straightforward, and I'm not trying to set you up, but people have called the show since you announced, and I, I support you from the get-go. But many people are saying, well, look, how do you know he's real? How do you know he's not going to split the Republican vote by running as a third-party candidate, pulling a Ross Perot? Would you answer that question? Do you think it's a, a, a fair fear? Well, first of all, I have to say I'm real. And, you know, you saw a poll that just recently came out in New Hampshire. This is from before I announced, before. So a lot of people didn't think I was running. And I was in third place, which is pretty good. And I think the reason I do well in that isn't because necessarily, I think I'm a nice person. I think you know I'm a nice person. I love giving to charities and helping people, the wounded warriors and everybody else that have been horribly treated. The vets have been horribly treated. But, but you know, the fact is, they, you know, a lot of people, they don't think I'm going to give up my life in order to do this. And we have to make America great again. And I came in third in a recent New Hampshire poll, and everyone's sort of like going, how is that possible? And again, considering they don't think I'm running, that's pretty amazing. Now, I'm very serious about it, Michael. I think our country is run by incompetent people. We have an incompetent president who truly doesn't have a clue. I don't think he has a clue. You know, a lot of people think he's a bad person. I don't know if he's good or bad. I can tell you what he is. He's incompetent. He doesn't, have, he doesn't know what he's doing. And, you know, you look at Sergeant Bergdahl, where we get Bergdahl, the traitor. We get Bergdahl. They get five killers that are out there on the field now trying to kill everybody. And, you know, this is the way we would negotiate. This is the way he negotiates. We, you know, the Iran deal is a disaster. The trade deals are all a disaster. Every, every country is beating us in trade. And believe me, if I win, that won't happen. That will not be happening, that I can tell you. Well, well let me ask you this. Given the antipathy of the Republican establishment to your candidacy, because they're afraid by your, your simple, plain, honest truths and what needs to be done, would you consider running on a third-party ticket? And you know what that would do. That would elect Hillary, wouldn't it? Sure. I'm never writing anything off. I'm, gonna, I'm running as a Republican. I am a Republican. I'm a conservative. Okay. Well, you said it right now. You said I'm running as a Republican. That's, that's really what I said. I said he's not going to split the ticket. 
Yeah, I'm I'm running as a Republican. I want to go all the way. I don't like a lot of these people. It's not even like I don't respect some of these people. They right. They shouldn't be running for office. They have no right, right. To run for office. Yeah, you know, most of them are. They're in. Donald, you know that the best and the brightest generally don't go into politics. You being the exception. And you said years ago, run the country like a business. Uh, not like uh, well, God knows what it is, a welfare state. Right. You and I both agree there should be tariffs on on Chinese goods. Don't you agree? Us. They're, they're, they're tariffing our goods. They're putting tariffs and taxes on our goods. And we talk about free trade. You know, the problem with free trade is you need speak to smart people to negotiate for. I don't mind. I love free trade. I'm a free trader. But right. China's not a free trader. They're killing us. You know, when Boeing sells planes to China, they take all the secrets of Boeing. That's part of the deal. You're going to have to give us all your patents, all your Ugh. secrets. You're going to have to give us everything. I mean, it's brutal you do business with them. I have a friend that tries to get stuff into China. He can't get it in. Finally, he gets it in, and they charge him tax. And yet we think they're so wonderful. And, you know, they put out a statement about me from the Chinese embassy. I was very mm. proud of that, of course. But they put out a statement that Mr. Trump is wrong, essentially. Mr. Trump is wrong. We have a wonderful partnership with the United States. <laughs> a partnership. Well, of course they love it. I love it, too, when we have stupid partners that don't know what they're doing. You know, Sure, like like the, the battery maker, A123 Systems, which was given $133 million in, in federal taxes and whatnot, tax credits and, and grants. They went bankrupt. The company was then bought by a Chinese company, and now they're making a profit and they're not going to pay back the federal government. What a deal they got, hey, Donald? Uh, we are... We are Incompetent. You know, the, the, the people that we have, neg we have great people. We have Henry Kravis and Carl Icahn, and, you know, I could name a hundred guys. I could also name guys that have big names that aren't very good. You know, they're overrated. But I know the good ones, <laughs> I know the bad ones. I could put people in charge of China. China doesn't have a chance. I could be people in charge of Japan. You know, Japan sends in millions of cars over the years, millions. When was the last time you see a Chevrolet in Tokyo? Do you think there's any Chevrolet in Tokyo? Maybe the two. You know, how many Chevrolets do you think we have driving around in the no, Donald, I see the ships coming in San Francisco Bay every day. My heart breaks. I see these ships laden with foreign cars, and I don't understand why there's no tariffs on them. Well, how about this? Ford goes out and announces they're going to build a $2.5 billion plant in Mexico, right smack in the middle of Mexico. They're going to build, and you know what they're going to do with the plant? They're going to make cars and parts and trucks and stuff. They're going to send them to the United States, no tax. Now, explain to me, because I'm sort of a natural business. I built a great company. You see that because I released my financials, and everyone's sort of shocked. They had no idea. Right. They were, you know, they were hoping that... They wouldn't be so good, and they were, yeah, they were hoping they were hoping you were broke and that you you owed more money than you earned. I know that's what they were hoping. They were they were they were disappointed, weren't they? Right. Oh well, they were shocked because I'm a private company. They didn't know, so they were thinking it was two billion or one billion or nothing, or maybe I was worth nothing, and it turned out to be nine billion and. <laughs> Much higher than that, it will be. Much higher than that. But $9 billion, And by the way, very little debt. Unbelievable. So they were shocked. You know, they're going, wow, that we had no idea. Because, again, as a private company, these magazines and all, who treat me fine? But they don't know what. And, and I'm not doing that as a braggadocious thing. I'm just saying... I know what I'm doing. I would not let Mexico get away with it. I would tell Ford, you're going to pay a 35% tax every time you make a car and send it in. Because what are they doing? When they make cars in Mexico, that means we're not making that car in the United States. It's very simple. And that means we're not employing our people. Do you know how many companies have gone to Mexico to, to build? I mean, it's, you look at New England. The place was a ghost town. So, yes. look, we need – and I love Mexico. I, th I love the Mexican people. I have a lot of relationships with them. But they know they're getting away with murder. It's like China. China is the number one abuser, though. What they do with their currency manipulation is incredible. And our people are so stupid, they don't even cover it in trade packs. So, you look, know, when I, Donald, when you announced this week, I watched the little people, the, the Lilliputians, attack you. You know what I called them? I said they're toe dust compared to him. I saw these little men and little women – trying to rip you apart, and I said they are toe dust. That's all they are. They're jealous of this man, and there's a lot of jealousy for successful people in this country, as you well know, Donald. Who would you pick as a VP candidate? Well, before I say that, you have like a guy like George Will. His hatred for me is unbelievable. What he doesn't tell you, you know, you take his glasses off and he doesn't look like a smart guy anymore, right? But, <laughs> but he yeah, would... I call him, uh, let's call him toe dust in a bad suit. 
Right. I have a place, Mar-a-Lago, and he was there about 12 years ago. He made a speech. I didn't go to it because I find him very boring. And he's actually wrong on many things. He was wrong on Iraq and wrong on plenty of things. But the hatred this guy has, I said, wow, I probably should have gone. But he was just 